Hi everybody, I'm DLTX, and welcome to a brand new video. Today, we'll be talking about Animal Crossing. Now, in my last video, I mentioned how excited I am for New Horizons. Horizons. And that's why I've decided I, that for the next few months, and a lot of my videos are going to be all about Animal Crossing. Today, we'll be talking about the general facts of the series. You might be surprised at how far the series has gone. Development of Animal Crossing began here on the N64 with this special controller. So all I have to do is... Oh my god. Why would they design the controller like this? This is horrible! I can't do anything! Anyway, development of Animal Crossing began with this system, the N64. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering, but BLTX, what happened to the GameCube? Well, yes, there is a GameCube edition of this game, and to us North American players, this was the first Animal Crossing game. But in Japan, no! The N64 is where development began. The story of Animal Crossing is an interesting one. It began with series creator Katsuya Aguchi. Aguchi moved, moved over 300 miles over to Kyoto in order to work at Nintendo. But when he did that, he started to realize how much he missed his family and friends. It was then he realized how important this is. And that was the impetus behind the original Animal Crossing, says Aguchi. Development of Animal Crossing began in Japan on the N64. Originally, Animal Crossing was supposed to be ported to the Nintendo 64 DD. If you haven't owned one of these or haven't heard of it, I can't say that I blame you. The 64 DD was a commercial failure. I'm gonna leave that out of today's video, because it's a long story, and we simply don't have time for that. The N64 or DD had a number of features that the N64 didn't, one of which was an internal clock. Animal Crossing, or Debutsu no Mori, which literally translates to Animal Forest, was supposed to make use of this feature. However, when the DD proved to be a commercial failure, development was switched to the regular N64. Eight months after Animal Forest was released for the N64, a re-release was made for the GameCube called Animal Forest Plus. This is the version of the game that we got in the States, which was translated into Animal Crossing. However, when translating the game into English, that proved to be a lot of work. Thousands of text was translated from Japanese into English, and in addition, a bunch of new holidays were added. For some reason, Japan seems to lack a lot of holidays that Westerners have, so we had to import our own holidays as well as original villagers, including Christmas or Toy Day, as it came to be known in Animal Crossing. Then it gets confusing for the Japanese, as the English version was re-released for the e-reader in Japan, and became Animal Forest E+, which was translated from the US version. So in other words, Japan got Animal Forest, re-released it for the GameCube as Animal Forest Plus, got released to the US, which added a bunch of new features, and the US version was re-released in Japan for the e-reader as Animal Forest E+. Whew! Quite a mouthful there. After that, we got Animal Crossing Wild World for the Nintendo DS. And this is where things start to get bizarre. You remember when I mentioned how you might be surprised how far the Animal Crossing series can be? Well, if you want peculiar stuff from the Animal Crossing series, look no further than the Animal Crossing movie. Oh yeah, that movie. The movie, which has since been known as Jabutsu no Mori by American viewers, ugh, uh, that gets confusing. Follows the tale of young girl I as she moves to Animal Village. There, she befriends Whitney, Rosie, and Margie after working for Tom Nook. Soon, she meets the other human, Yu. Yeah, their names are literally just I and Yu. It's a joke. I mean, it's a bad joke, but a joke. And his friend Alfonso. After settling in, I find a mysterious bottle washed upon the beach. Throughout the movie, she receives several bottles, one of which tells her to plant pine trees all around the town, in order to see a fantastic light show during the holiday season. While this fantastic light show did happen, it also caused the misunderstanding when Gulliver crashed onto the beach. It turns out that some of his spaceship parts have been lost in the crash, and the crew has to go and retrieve them. Then confusion happens with... whatever this is supposed to be, I don't know. 
In the end, they help Gulliver, then Tortimer is re-elected as mayor, and yada yada yada. This movie is just plain weird. I really don't understand it. I really don't understand it at all. But, back to the games. Specifically, I want to end off this video by talking about Mr. Rossetti. If you're not aware of who Mr. Rossetti is... Who are you people? This beloved mole runs the Reset Surveillance Center. He's also been the source of controversy over the years. Former Nintendo president Terawada mentioned that uh, Mr. Rossetti's abrasive tones actually made some young girls cry. Now, as for Animal Crossing New Horizon, Ayaki Ogoku has made it very clear that Mr. Rossetti's role is going to change. With the new autosave feature, or which has been announced in interviews, it's clear that Mr. Rossetti is going to have a different job. Exactly what that job is going to be, well, we'll just have to wait and see. But what I do know is that this autosaving feature is going to be very helpful. I got a golden stag. Now we're back on. Oh well, anyways, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, you can head over to the rest of my channel to find out about new Nintendo content, content, history, and my personal top 10 lists. And if you want to see some movies, you can head over to Loops and Films where I direct the majority of what we have. We've had a new movie up for weeks, and we have a new FTY presentation coming up this month. Uh, thank you for watching my videos, and I'll see you next time. Tom de casa!